IFRS 2 share based payment. IFRS 2 share based payment deals with the acquisition of goods and services and the payment that is to be made against goods or services in the form of share based payment. So it's very important to understand that what is share based payment. Share based payment can be of two types when uh, you can pay against goods or services in the form of uh, equity settled share based payment transactions or cash settled share based payment transaction. So a share based payment might be in the form of when you are giving either shares against goods and services or share options. So if you are giving shares or share options, then it's called equity settled share based payment. But sometimes you provide cash against goods or services, but the cash settled share based payment transaction means that the payment is to be connected with the value of equity because if it's a direct cash payment that it will not be covered under IFRS 2. So cash settled share based payment means that the value of payment is connected with the equity. For example, I will pay you cash in two years time against the worth of 10,000 ordinary shares. So that is the cash settled share based payment. Typically the cash settled share based payment takes the form of a share appreciation right, which is normally given against services to employees. Now what is share option? When a company issued share options it's mean that it is an option given which is a right to do something which is a right to exercise shares which is a right to buy shares but not the obligation to buy shares so for example if employee share option scheme has been initiated then you are giving your employee a right to subscribe for shares but not the obligation to buy shares now typically a uh, service arrangement will be made in such a way that employee will get remuneration in the form of cash and other non cash benefits and share options will be part of such non cash payment that against the services employee can opt for shares of a company via share option scheme. Now if goods have been acquired against share based payment transaction then typically the entry is asset debit and equity is credit if it's a sh equity settled share based payment transaction and liability is credit if it's a cash settled share based payment transaction. But if you uh, are acquiring services either from employee or self employed, then expense is to be debited and credit is either equity or liability. Now one important question is that when you try to record asset or expense then what would be the value? So first of all, fair value of goods or services is to be identified and used in making this journal entry. But sometimes it happens that usually in the case of services that fair value of services cannot be reliably measured. So if you are getting services from a self-employed person, then fair value can be reliably measured. But if you are getting services from any, from your employee, then fair value of services cannot be reliably measured. In that case, fair value of equity instrument granted or fair value of the cash shuttle share based payment transaction or share appreciation right is to be used. Share option scheme to employ. When you start a question related to share option scheme related to employee against services, following terminologies to be used. First one is the grant date. Grant date is the date on which the share option share option scheme has been initiated number of options that how much how many num, uh, options have been given to each employee fair value of option that is the worth of option market value uh, vesting date that the uh, on what date the entitlement will be created and the conditions there might be two conditions one is called the service condition which must be satisfied in order to get this entitlement or it might be a performance condition. Sometimes both must be satisfied. Sometimes a single condition is enough to get this entitlement and the vesting period. Vesting period is a time period from the grant date to the vesting date. This, this time period is called the vesting period. 
So after that vesting period, an employee is able to exercise provided that conditions have been satisfied. So for example, the grant date is 1st January 2010. Vesting date is 31st December 2013. So it's 10, 11, 12, 13. So vesting period of four years has been given to the employee. Now, if employee is given services over a period of four years against the share option scheme, then typically an expense is to be recognized over a period of time because we are getting services over a period of time. So expense is to be recognized over a period of time. But the amount of expense depend on some estimations. So let's see what is this. For example, grant date is 1st January 2019. Number of options granted to each, each employee is 5000. Number of employees at grant date 800. Fair value of option at grant date is $10 per option. Vesting date is 31st December 2021. That is 19, 20, 21, three years. And a minimum service condition has been imposed by the employer in order to get this entitlement, which is three year vesting period. Calculate expense for the year 2020 and equity as at 31st December 2020 in the second year. In this example, I'm assuming that the number of employee will remain the same till the vesting date. Means no one is uh, leaving that uh, job. So, how much expense is to be recognized in first year? That is 31st December 2019. So take number of uh, employees first. So number of employees is 800 multiply by number of options to each employee 5000 multiply by the fair value at grant date multiply by the number of uh, services year vesting period. So it's as it is first year and we have three years. So typically the expense is over a period of three years time. And uh, if you calculate this 800 into 5000 multiplied by 10 divided by three. So the first year expense is one, three, 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 three. This is the expense for the first year. So a journal entry is to be made expense debit and equity credit. Now the next year, the same expense because our assumption is that no one is ready to leave the employment. So the next year expense is 800 into 5,000 multiplied by dollar 10 multiplied by two by three. So this is cumulative. So cumulative expense and that is the equity for sec for the two year period is so the cumulative one is two, six, 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 seven. This is cumulative equity and expense for the year is same for second year is one, three, 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 three. So this is expense for second year and this is equity as at 31st December 2020. Now, if we assume that uh, there might be some left over by the employees, so let's make some changes in this question. So it's assumed that uh, there is a turnover of employees. So in the first year, 31st December 2019, during 2019, 20 employees left and it's expected at the air end that in the remaining period, 25 will leave more. Similarly, in the next period, during 2020, 15 employees left actually, and it is expected that 15 more will leave in future. And in the third year, which is the last year, the actual employees left is eight. Calculate expense for each year. Now we have to insert the number of employees left actually in the period. So our calculation will be changed as. So expense and equity. So in the first year we have Number of employees 8,000, 20 left actually and 25 will leave. So the number of employees calculation is now 20 left, 25 will leave in future. So this is the expected number of employees multiplied by the number of uh, option given to each employee, which is uh, 5,000. 
and number of employees 800 so it's 5000 multiplied by the value of option and first year so divided by 3 so as a result our expense for the first year period is number of employees 800 minus 20 minus 25 multiplied by 5000 number of options into fair value of options divided by time so it's one two five eight three expense for the year and equity as at first year so this is first year in the second year the number of employees is now changed and in the second year 15 employees actually left so 820 actually left last year 15 actually left this year and now the expectation has been changed and 15 will leave more in future so instead of 25 it's now 15 number of option is same multiply by the value and it's now 2 over 3 so the result of 2 over 3 is the total equity so 800 minus 20 minus 30 this is the number of employees multiplied by number of options value of options into 2 divided by 3 so the total equity is now 25,000 now take the difference between the equity and this difference is the expense for the year and that is one two four one seven and in case of the third year the actual number of employees 800 first year 20 second year 15 and the third year actual number of employees are eight so now the situation is like multiply by 10 and 3 by 3 so total three year value is now it's three seven eight five zero now take the difference three seven eight five zero minus twenty five thousand so the expense for the year is one two eight five zero so because of the changes in the number of employees our expense has been changing and total equity as at 31st December 2021 is 37850 and the entry will be each year expense debit and equity credit.